guys been on one of them big planes where they got that, that screen in front of you that, that, I guess you watch TV or something, some of them was, but yeah. it, it tells you like how high you are and where you're going? I'm sitting there watching. I, I Please forgive me, I'm not trying to be specific on this deal because I have not a clue, but it's like you're cruising now at 12,000 feet. Suddenly, you are at 8,000 feet. That means we dropped 4,000 feet. And my stomach just came out my mouth. And I just, I hold the record for United. I filled up the most barf bags in one flight that they had ever done. It, it does have instructions on the bag, though. Have you guys seen that? It, it, it tells you what to do. Take it with you. I thought, no way. That lady gets paid for this. Bless her heart. Majority of young people who go off to college walk away from Christianity. Young people that have been raised in the church turning their back on their faith, on Christianity, the way they've been raised, all of their life. Because they do not know how to defend their faith. The mainstream American church has been so focused for so long on evangelism and reaching the lost that they have, I'm going to say, in a generalized statement, neglected the body of Christ and the family of God. They have failed by, by being so focused on evangelism that they have failed their own young people to be equipped in apologetics and in a Christian worldview to be able to defend their faith in a secular world. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10, God says this, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of the faith. Do good to everyone. Absolutely. That's your testimony and your witness to, to do good to anyone and everyone who God brings into your path, but especially the body of Christ and the family of God. <laughs> There is, a, there is a mindset sometimes in, in American churches to think that, that since, since they're already in, we don't have to worry about them. And we are always looking out. And at the cost of some of our young people. Look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Do good, but especially to the family of God. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. And God says this. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for Him and how you have shown your love to Him by caring for other believers. God is going to reward those who specifically have cared for each other, for other believers. How hard you've worked for Him and how you have shown love to Him by caring for other believers. Look at Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Starting in verse 12. Well, we'll back up to verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. Now these are the gifts that Christ, Jesus, gave to the church, the body of Christ, the family of God. The apostles, apostles prophets, and evangelists, and pastors and teachers. Verse 12. Their responsibility... <coughs> is to equip God's people to do the work and build up the church, the body of Christ, the family of God. We are to build up and equip the body of Christ for the works of service. 
It is not the pastor's job alone to be out doing the work of the ministry. It is his position to be equipping the saints. Every person within the body of Christ, within the family of God, is to be equipped to do the works of ministry. Because it happens. I have people who love me enough to tell me the truth. I have people who love me enough, brothers and sisters in Christ, who love me enough to speak the truth at risking a relationship. That's love. Amen? How many times have you and I seen a brother or sister doing something and you knew that you should say something? I knew that I should speak, but I said, mm, they ain't going to take that well. Mm, 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 mm. Holy Spirit, go away. Go away. Don't you talk to me. I don't want na 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 na. I don't want to hear it. God, if I say that to that person, they're gonna write me off. I'm a missionary. I need money. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell them that. No way. Risk a relationship. But that's love. Look at what he says in verse 15. Instead, we will speak the truth in what? Love. In love. Growing in every way more and more like Christ who sacrificed and who spoke the truth in love did not forsake the truth for, for, for what the world wants to call, even religion wants to call unity. We fall into the trap of Satan. In religion and in church, they talk about, well, we've got to have unity. And yet, what are they willing to set aside? So oftentimes, truth. And if you separate truth from unity, you have deception. Amen? You have deception. Truth and love and unity are inseparable. You cannot separate them. True love will speak truth. And unity will be the result. Love one another. That's the command that he gave. Be willing to risk the relationship for the sake of that person who needs to hear the truth. That's love. Not popular. As the body of Christ and the family of God are equipped and exercise their spiritual gifts, the body functions as it should. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but it is the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is the source of every one. And that sounds like me, but it doesn't sound like what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm like, we could just play me and I could go. <laughs> it's the demon of electronics. That's what it is. Here you go. It's that computer thing. Verse 7, he says, a spiritual gift. Look at verse 7. A spiritual gift is given to each one of us so that we can help and serve each other. A spiritual gift is given so that we can serve. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. God says this. God has given each of you, talking to the body of Christ, the family of God, verse 10, God has given each of you a gift from His great variety of spiritual gifts. Now's the command. Use them. Use them well to serve one another. If you are not exercising your gift, you are hindering the body of Christ. James chapter 4, verse 17, this is what God said. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. It is sin. God tells us in 1 Peter that we are given a gift. And that we are to use that gift to build up the body of Christ. So the body of Christ is efficient in doing what God's God's plan is. And he says, now remember. To know what you ought to do and not do it. Is what? Sin. 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 To work enthusiastically <clears throat> for the Lord. 
knowing that what we do for the Lord is not in vain.